Hello and welcome to uh, Flash Chapter 2, Lesson 5, Working with Layers and Objects. The idea behind this is, is we are going to be working with some different layering and different object tools in order to create some very interesting effects and we continue on our idea of kind of working with things as it goes through. I've opened uh, FL2 underscore 5 and what we're going to do is uh, notice I've already created a new layer, right? Um, we're going to click uh, frame 1 and layer 2, which I've already done, which is on 2-46, number 4. I'm going to select the, select the rectangle tool, so I go along here, and I select my rectangle tool right there. Now, what's important is to notice I turn this in by 10, 10, 10, 10, and what that's going to do is that's going to create a border like this right that's actually gray and it has the outline there's my stroke right and there's my actual fill now you'll notice that's it on top of the um, the um, car the classic car thing that we created before and it's set for stroke 2 as it's indicated on number 5 in a rectangle tool um, I also you'll also note that the color itself it says fill color tool and it's 9999 so here's our um, 9999 should be let's see here we got a gray all right so click the stroke color tool and we want to change the let's see mm -hmm. rectangle tool set the stroke to two fill and stroke error click the fill color color swatch on the tools panel so on our tools panel we want to click our fill color swatch here and we want to change that to number nine 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 and I want to press enter so we're modifying it to be that light color and then here for like hit zero 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 so we're actually gonna make those changes as appropriate so if I want to actually since mine's a little darker than it needs to be I can change the fill color there come along to my fill color tool change the paint bucket click on that and now I'm the right one so, now what we're going to do, since we've already done that, is we want to actually take our layer 1 and we want to move it above our layer 2, so it's layering. So, now Classic Car Club is below that particular layer. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're double-click layer 1 on the timeline, which is this, and we're going to call it Heading. Right? And now we want to double-click layer 2, and we're calling that Heading Background. Okay, perfect. So we've done uh, layer two and layer one. And now what it's actually talking about is they want to, if you've renamed things this way, they have this option at the very bottom. And what's going on is, is they say, uh, click on the timeline icon 2-47 number three. All that's meaning is this. You may have changed the names of things and it might look like this so you can't see it all. All you do is you change your mouse pointer. Notice it turns from a single pointed arrow to a double pointed arrow, drag it over and drop and then I get to see all the elements um, I can then delete it so for instance it says click the hitting la hidden heading layer then click the delete icon so if I want to I can click the heading layer I could actually do the delete icon or use my delete button and it'll take care of some objects and then I can also edit undo delete um, I can also right click I can delete my layer and it goes away and I can do edit, undelete layer. So it gives you an idea of how to kind of manipulate where that's concerned. Um, the next thing we can do is we can ply, uh, uh, play with the show or hide. So if I close this uh, um, eye right here, it, show, it hides all my layers. If I open it up, it opens them all up. I can actually choose to close one layer by clicking notice. I've closed below it, and now I've opened it. I can close this layer by doing the same thing. Then I have my lock layer. That's going to lock them all, so I can't modify those. I can actually do this so I can see the outline. That's this show all layers as outline, so I can actually see through all the layers and manipulate them as appropriate. And the showing the layers and messing with the layers is on Flash 2-48, number 1 through 9. So it's giving you an idea how to uh, kind of manipulate those. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a layer and now I could use the new layer button or I can and what that new layer button they keep speaking of is let me grab this window here because it's not quite 
large enough. So let me bring this up here. Ah, come on. Let me grab it right here. You'll see down here I have these different options, one of which is a new layer option, which is here. That's our delete that we had from before. So I'm going to go ahead and push my new layer. It's going to create a layer called Layer 6. Um, I'm going to put this layer between the heading and the heading background, and I'm going to rename this layer Guide. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually creating a guide that's going to enable me to add information. I'm going to, so I have my uh, guide selected. I want to click Modify, and I want to click Layer Properties. It says click Modify in the menu, point to Timeline, sorry, Timeline, and then Layer Properties. And we want to choose Guide. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow a, us to draw a shape that's going to then dictate the value of other shapes and where that goes. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this line right here. I'm going to hold my shift key, and when I hold my shift key and then drag it this way, it gives me a 45 degree line. Now you'll notice my line is very, uh, I don't know, light, and I can actually increase my, uh, let me make sure I have it actually selected again. So I have my line selected, and I can actually increase um, there. So now I can actually see more of my line, and I can change it to, there you go, so now it's kind of bigger. And I think I can change my fill color to a black, I believe. So, yeah, it's not letting me actually change my line for whatever reason, which makes me very, very sad. I'm not worried about it at this point in time. Oh, here we go. How about a black? Boom. There we go. I was trying to uh, fill the inside. And that's important, too, just a bit of information. I kept trying to fill the inside of the line. There's no inside of a line. It's just a line. So I had to manipulate the stroke color. But I made it very obvious to see. So when we're actually manipulating, we can do with that layer. So I've done that. I click the lock or unlock this layer on the guide layer to lock it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to this guide layer. We're going to lock that guide layer so it can't be changed. Um, and then we're going to view on the menu bar. And then we're going to make sure that snapping... Uh, Snap to Guides, Snap to Guides is selected, right? So the next step we're going to do, and the reason we did that is we're going to add in shapes. And what those shapes are going to do is they're going to give us an undercurrent that or a uh, guideline that says, okay, I'm putting that oval together. So I click on this, and you'll notice that I want to choose my oval tool. And my oval tool, I'm going to choose this red gradient that seems to be so prevalent. And then I'm going to draw an oval Yep, there's my oval tool, and I'm just going to draw myself a little oval. See, oh, okay. Sorry. I'm on the guide tool, so I'm going to ch click my heading um, to in, or in order to create that. Well, you know, mistakes happen. All right, so now I'm going to create my oval, and there's my oval. Now you'll notice that my stroke is huge for this particular oval. So I want to make sure to select it, and I want to, here, let me actually select the whole thing here. There we go. Now I've actually selected it. Let's do here. Let me just edit, undo, undo some of this. So because I've I've gotten it too close here. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and click my oval tool again, and when I do that, I'm going to make sure my stroke is actually you know not crazy. There we go. Now when I actually create my oval with a gradient, there much better. And what I can actually do at this point in time is I can here I'm going to go ahead and have my selection tool. I'm going to take my marquee. I'm going to actually, or, or, I'm going to take my marquee to fully select it. Eh, still getting other parts of it. I'm trying to. Here we go. Oh man. Okay. So at this point in time, I can actually grab it. And notice as I move it over, you see that little circle in the middle of it. As I take it. Here, it's actually going to lock. Notice it kind of locks on that guide. So it's actually being used as a guide. So what I can do at this point in time is I can do edit, copy, edit, paste in center. So that's going to allow me to put another. Notice I'm moving right along. It guides right along there. Edit, copy, edit, paste in center, and then move along in there. So I've got my, let's move this up here, make it a little bit easier. There we go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, and those are my three ovals, right? 
the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a text tool and I'm going to create a text box. So here's my text box. And my text is going to say events. Events. Now, my events te text box, I need to make sure to select it. And I want to use my iBeam pointer to, there's my text. I want to use my iBeam po pointer to select it here. And then I want to change it to Arial, which is Arial, 14 point. And I want to make sure to choose bold. So here's my bold. And then I want to choose 9999 for the color. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So there's my color. So it's this darker um, type text. And then what I can just do is I can grab it. And you notice it also has that alignment. And it snaps too. Now, in this particular case, it doesn't always snap to where it needs to go. So you might have to manipulate a little bit. And then what I can do, edit, copy, edit, paste, and center. Now, I can go back to my text. And it wants us to do about us and links. So here's my about us. Oh. So there's our about us. I can then select it. So there we go. There's our about us. I can actually move it around using my keyboard a little bit to get it nice and centered. Same with events. Right. And I can do edit. Copy, edit, paste in center. It's going to paste it there. And I can come along and grab my text again. Change it from events and change it to links. Then I can grab it, click here. And there you go. And so what I did in this particular, in our, our sections here, is we created a layer. We messed with the background where that's concerned, so we messed with our layers. Then we created these ovals that do a snap to with these names involved here. And we put all this together in such a way as to create a complete product using some of the things that we've dealt with before. This actually ends our chapter two, lesson five, working with layers and objects. There is a little bit of mistake, but you know, it is what it is. It kind of gives you an idea of what it is. And this guide here will not actually appear in the final thing. So if you have any particular questions, ask me uh, as you like. Otherwise, good luck on the project. Take care.